Fox News loves a good scandal, but when it involves the parent company, not so much. The network owned by Rupert Murdoch has tread lightly when it comes to the phone hacking debacle at Murdoch's British Papers. According to the liberal group Media Matters, from July 4th through July 13th, CNN ran 109 segments on the Murdoch mess, MSNBC ran 71, Fox News just 30. CNN has even reported on Fox's lack of reporting. The British media scandal involving Rupert Murdoch's News Corporation has apparently put Fox News in a bit of a bind. The network has apparently gone out of its way to avoid a lot of reporting on its parent company's troubles. On a word about this international story last week and on Fox's media show, Fox News Watch, which the panelists joked about off the air. Anybody want to bring up the subject we're not talking about today for the, for the streamers? Sure, go ahead, Kyle. No, go ahead. Yes. <laughs> I'm not going to touch it. <laughs> With a 10-foot turban. Yeah. The program did tackle the Murdoch scandal yesterday. Joining us now to talk about how news organizations cover bad news about themselves, James Fallows, national correspondent for The Atlantic, and Eric Wemple, who blogs about the media for The Washington Post. Jim, is it realistic to expect Fox News to devote plenty of coverage to the scandal? No, but it's realistic to, to expect them to devote some coverage. And there was an astonishing clip just on Friday, I think, which uh, Eric put on his blog, and I was also having on the Atlantic site, where Fox was having uh, Fox and Friends had an expert talking about how terrible it was to have all this hacking. Citibank was hacked, the Pentagon was hacked, the News of the World was hacked. You know, acting as if this was, you know, why were we paying more attention to the news world as the victim of the hacking as opposed to the one that had been doing it? The perpetrator would be the uh, exactly. correct term. Eric Wemple, uh, how much responsibility does a news organization to ha have to cover itself when there is trouble? Well, I think there's a difference between responsibility and expecting them to sort of be on the forefront of things. I th one of the things I pointed out is if the news court doesn't cover this at all, they, it'll, it'll hurt them in the ratings. I think that's a powerful check, you know. If, if there's any company that cares about ratings, it's news court. And this happens to be a great and juicy story. Yes, it does. <laughs> and so if they totally ignore it, well, then they'll push people elsewhere. And my only point is that you know, you can you can control, you can you can shame, you can you know run numbers and stuff, but you can never expect the final word from uh, you know an appendage of the parent company. You have to have watchdogs deliver the final right, word. Right, the final word. Look, I think Murdoch's Wall Street Journal has done a good job, not a great job, but is there a suspicion that if you do cover it a lot? that you're putting out some kind of sanitized version or pulling your punches. Well, certainly the kind of the clip I was mentioning on Fox News did uh, feed that suspicion. I think it's important to distinguish the two main U.S. Murdoch properties, the Wall Street Journal on one hand and Fox News on the other. They each are facing a kind of challenge, I think. You know, Wall Street Journal is one of the great journalistic institutions in American history, but even they have been light on the subject. Joe Nocera had a very tough column yesterday in the New York Times uh, pointing out this. In fr and yes, in Friday's front section of the Wall Street Journal, there was no news about this whatsoever. It was on the front page of uh, other publications. Fox, I think it's a different question, which is whether they're going to be present themselves as a real news organization at all if they so uh, badly mishandle the story. Well, I feel very strongly about this. I mean, we do it on this program all the time. When CNN has controversy, I, I always cover it. And otherwise, what you're, you're, what you're signaling to viewers is there's a double standard. We're only aggressive when some other organization is in trouble. And I think that can undermine your credibility. But, okay, you, but, but you said it's unnatural and stupid to expect well, organizations well, I to I think do it's this. unnatural and stupid to like say, oh, geez, uh, you know, if you listen carefully to what Wolf Blitzer said, it seems as though Fox News is going out of its way not to give a lot of coverage to its own parent company. It's like, well, duh. You know, that's what I would expect. That doesn't, that doesn't deserve a breaking news logo. <laughs> that does not deserve a breaking <laughs> news logo. And so, yeah, that, that's my only point, is that that's why we have what the British call media plurality. That's why we have other organizations that can, you know, they can burrow in and figure out. I, I, I personally, that's fine if you, Howard, believe you cover CNN, the, the troubles of CNN. It, however, if you're walking down the hall and you figure something out, I wouldn't expect you to be the first to come out and break it and to, and okay. to tell the whole well, you world. Know, since I, go ahead, and just make a slightly contrary point. One reason that the New York Times has special standing is after the Jason Blair uh, scandal, after the Iraq WMD scandal, they themselves launched big projects to say, how did this happen? What should we do about it? CBS with the Dan Rather situation, they had their own investigator come in. If the Fox properties do something like that, that will be more impressive than if they don't. It's what we expect of news organizations. Right. I mean, New York Times didn't break the Jason Blair right. story. Right, but they then went back I, I into it. I mentioned that because sure. I did, but, yes. but certainly <laughs> they put all kinds of reporters on right. a major project. Now, Fox News Watch, after that embarrassment of not covering it at all, did, as I mentioned, uh, talk about this yesterday. Here's uh, some comments from columnist Cal Thomas. 
This is the biggest case of piling on since the last rugby game I saw. The left has been out to get News Corp, especially Fox News Channel, and the Murdoch family for years. Now, isn't there something to that? The liberal critics of Rupert Murdoch are having a field day with this. CNN has covered it a lot. Maybe CNN is do covering it too much because no, Fox no, is a competitor. There's, there's no surfeit. There's no uh, excess of coverage. The coverage, I think, is just about right. The, pro the, the reason why there might be that appearance is because you have two, two you know, really uh, far-flung time zones. You have Rebecca Brooks, <laughs> who resigns at our time, 525, basically, in the morning. Les Hinton resigns our time, like, Five o'clock in the afternoon. Ahead of Dow Jones. Yes, right. So you have two resignations at the end of a day. <laughs> you know how, how? What other perception can you have other than that the media is playing up? No, News Corp is playing this up because everybody is going and, down. And, and to emphasize why this matters, this is as big a crisis as happened in Britain in a generation plus. Because it goes the, well beyond oh, the media. Oh yes, it's, too, it's, uh, it's the police, it's the political establishment, it's the media establishment, and the most important, the most powerful single media person in the U.S. too, which is Rupert Murdoch. So not to cover this would be journalistic uh, malfeasance. But you wouldn't concede that, uh, I mean, you have, for example, the Democratic Senatorial Campaign Committee putting out a petition, stand with Democrats, demand that Murdoch come yeah. clean on spying. You wouldn't concede that liberals who don't think, don't like Rupert Murdoch are just, uh, are just milking this for all it's worth? If there were, if this had no connection whatsoever to the nature of his operations, especially through Fox News, then you might say they're reaching. But since the, the basic accusation, that, as Michael Wolf was saying, that Murdoch is using his media power for political ends is similar in the U.K. and the U.S., I think it's natural that Democrats would say this. Now, on your uh, media blog at the Washington Post, you took on a Washington Post story, which was about the difference between British and American journalism. I'm happy to point that out. And you said, basically, we should just come out and say, British journal standards are sleazy and destructive. Uh, and you think that we're kind of dancing around that because I we thought, Americans thought, don't want to look superior? I in this particular iteration, I, I couldn't keep quiet. I'm not, you know, again, I, I, don't, I don't take relish in, in, in auditing my own employer, but I thought in this particular instance, he said, none of this is to say that, you know, American journalistic standards are superior to British. Nonsense. <laughs> they are. Okay? They're vastly superior. And one of the points I tried to make is one of the great embarrassments on our media landscape, as you pointed out in the story this week, is the New York Post which, you know, pay for coverage. Hey, pay me, I'll keep you out of the paper. Pay, pay, pay me, I'll keep, put you in the paper. You know, it goes both ways. Oh, uh, Murdoch now feels good about the Clintons. Let's write good things about the Clintons, you know? And so that's, one of the, that's the point I was trying to make, was that, yes, I do feel that American standards yeah. are superior. Think, which is not to say the yes. American media are perfect. Uh, yes, we <laughs> will agree on that. But I think the range from high to low in the British press is, is bro broader yes, than in the U.S. Yes, it's no accident that most great American tabloid editors are Brits, or at least Fleet Street Red Veterans, Australians have gone through there, too. That's why they're brought over here, and that's why yes. this story is not going to go away. If you're just tuning in, Rebecca Brooks, the uh, former Murdoch lieutenant who resigned Friday, arrested today in London. This story is not going away. Eric Wemple, James Fallows, thanks very much for joining us.